Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Montana. If you're new here, I like to film my daily life, all things fashion and business. As we all know, the fashion industry has been known for one of the biggest polluters in the environment. As 57 million tons of fabric waste is generated annually. Saying this, it does take 200 or more years for textiles to decompose in landfills. As individuals, this isn't necessarily our fault. It's more done by um, big manufacturers and retailers. But as an individual, we can also help by preventing textile waste by using whatever we can and if you have it why not use it we can always try and prevent wasting any of our textiles i mean you can do anything with scraps like there is so much out there there's plenty of videos on youtube to like of projects that you can do with your scraps um honestly it's so exciting it's like oh i can use all of this for something wow if you are a business owner or just someone who likes to sew and do crafts, there is always some ideas you can think of before um, buying fabric or just ways that you can um, be more ethical in the environment with your textiles. One is buying recycled material or dead stock. Um, this helps obviously reuse material and prevent what could have gone into the landfills. Um, Instead, now you're buying it. Another thing you can do is minimizing the fibers in the textile you buy. This helps in the future um, with being able to recycle it better. When thinking about designing something, you can put thought in how you're patterning the design, having a zero waste pattern um, with like less cuts, or simply trying to be a zero waste brand and using all of your scraps which is what i will be doing right now is showing you guys some fun scrap projects all right so i'm just gonna get into it there is a variety of different size scraps depending on what you consider a scrap and depending on the sizes it can limit the amount of projects you can do evidently the bigger they are the more variety there is you may feel like that the tiniest piece of fabric you cut from a project isn't useful and may just toss it out but if you started keeping these pieces, you would realize they eventually start to add up, and now you have several bags. I always had no idea what to do with my scraps, and I would get overwhelmed, and at the time, I couldn't find much on YouTube. But I'm now grateful for the videos there is now, and I'm happy to share what I do with mine. The smallest the scraps are always good for stuffing, and the bigger the scraps get, the more you can do. And here, I'm just showing you the different sizes of scraps from smallest to largest pretty much the first project i'm going to show you is a pressing or tailor sam they're used for pressing curved areas or seams like darts, sleeves, cuffs, and so on. I just pattern my own because essentially they're just big loafs and can be whatever size and shape that works best for you. I decided to pattern two sizes. What you'll need is sturdy and breathable fabrics because they'll be stuffed tightly and used regularly with steam. For my inner layer, I used muslin so the scraps stuffed inside won't be too apparent on the outside. And for the outside, I just chose a cotton that had contrast colors. Then of course, you will need your scraps. Traditionally, pressing hams are filled with sawdust, so I don't know how long scrapped filled hams last. Cut two pieces of your inner fabric, mine being muslin, with half a seam inch allowance. And whatever you cut off can be used to go into the ham. Then cut two pieces of the outer fabric of your choosing. A nice fabric pattern could be nice since this is the outer layer. Once you cut the pieces out, you should have four pieces, two inner and two outer.
First, put your outer and inner fabrics wrong sides together. Then place your outer layers, mine being the contrast fabric, place those right sides together, just as shown in the video. Once you have that finished, we'll take it to the machine and sew a half an inch around, making sure to leave an opening to flip the pressing ham right side out. Little kitty appearance! After you have that sewn, it's time to trim the seam allowance. This will allow flipping it with ease and minimizing the bulk at the seams. Therefore, I'm also going to add notches all around the seam for that same reason. Now it is time to flip it right side out and get your scrap pieces to stuff into the ham. When doing this, it is good to cut any pieces that are bigger, smaller, so you have less bulkiness and can get it in there more condensed. The pressing ham should feel tight and feel like a brick when thrown at someone. Please don't throw your ham at anyone. <laughs> to keep the scraps in, we now need to close the opening. And I forgot to mention, when trimming your seam allowance, make sure not to trim the opening part so it's easier to flip onto the inside and sew shut. I got overly excited and trimmed all around, and that's why I'm showing you what it should look like on the other um, pattern I cut out. Sew this shut with an invisible stitch. This is what my final pressing ham looks like. Pretty simple to make and it's definitely a useful project if you sew a lot. Plus this used a good amount of scraps. I wasn't able to stuff the other one, but now I have somewhere for my tiny scraps to go next time. This next project I'm showing you is just a sample, but I'm going to show you how you can um, use the small scraps and make them into pretty much a new fabric. What you'll need is your small scraps and a base layer fabric. There is two ways you can do this, by layering your fabrics how you want and adding salvi over it. Salvi is a water soluble film that is non-toxic. And the other option is to add a sheer fabric on top. And in this video, I will show you both options. When layering your fabrics onto the base, you can do it in any way that you like. And feel free to cut the pieces into shapes or whatever works for you. Once the fabric is layered, take your salvi or fabric and lay it on top and then pin. This is what the salvi looks like close up and you can buy it in a variety of sizes. This is just the one I have. And I'm just repeating for the fabric one. You can use whatever for the top layer. Um, anything you can see through I guess so you can see the scrap fabric and here I'm just showing you that tool can work or really any sheer fabric this is what I'm using
Now it's time to sew the fabric down. You can do this however. I just did my sewing lines randomly. And with the fabric overlay, you don't need to add so many stitches because the fabric is already holding the scraps down and keeping it in place. But as you can see, I can easily move around. And this is what it looks like close up. If you're doing the fabric option, I also recommend brighter scraps so then you can see through the layer nicely. Another foot you can use is called an embroidery foot. It can come with your machine or you may have to buy it separately. The embroidery foot allows you more ease on where you stitch and gives you more design options. But it's basically the same as just using a regular foot, but of course more options of design. This is what the solving one looks like close up. It isn't finished though, because we still need to dissolve it into the water. So take your fabric and place it into the water for a couple minutes, and it doesn't take that long to dissolve. Suddenly, it's all gone. Finally, just let it dry, and it's all finished. Both of the concepts are generally the same, but in my opinion, they both give off kind of a different aesthetic. With the Salvi, though, you can feel the textures of the other scraps, which could be either a benefit or not, but overall, it's pretty neat that essentially you can make your own fabric. This one is also a sample, but I wanted to show you all that you can cut your scraps up and basically build them up to be another fabric. I think this can also be called crumb quilting or patchwork. Anyways, grab whatever fabrics you want and you can just cut them up into squares or rectangles and then piece them together in any way. Once you have your pieces, sew them together. I recommend a small seam allowance so it is not as bulky in the end. And make sure to press for that same reason, to keep it neat. The last project isn't really a sewing project, but more of so a craft, but sometimes it's fun to switch things up. What you'll need is a canvas, glue, embroidery floss, if you want, just for extra details, and your scraps of choice. This is basically like making a collage and you can use other materials if you wish. You don't have to have such a detailed picture like I did either. You can honestly just simply glue pieces of fabric onto a canvas. I'm personally not even sure why I did a detailed design on such a small canvas, but I still had fun.
and make sure how you put the glue on because some fabrics will show the glue like obviously the black fabric then I just finished it off with adding embroidery details onto it There is so many more projects you can do with your scraps, and these are only a few, but I hope that I have inspired you for your next project. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed my scrap fabric projects. I know I did. It's kind of neat being able to use what you have like why go out and buy more when you can try something different it's definitely a fun way to go about things <laughs> if you enjoyed watching this video please like and comment i would like to hear what you guys do with your scrap fabric um if this was an interesting video honestly might end up filming more because there's so many possible things you can do with your scrap fabric and it's just honestly so fun anyways once again thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in another one you're oh my god that was so 